Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fat Mata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and in today's video I wanted to show you the things that I've been sewing over this past week. As you might know from my last video, I am coming out of hibernation. I had about a month or five weeks of no sewing at all and as soon as I was able to dive back in to my sewing practice, I wanted to make all the things. I wanted to begin by saying that last week I had shown you a couple of items but didn't have any videos of them on me. I have recorded some of that footage so I wanted to pop in some of those images so you can actually see the garments on because I know that helps with assessing fit and just like to be able to see something on a hanger and then also appreciate it on as well. I'm going to kick it off by showing you what the Zadie jumpsuit looks like on so that you can appreciate the pattern matching and all of those various elements that I worked really hard to, um, you know, incorporate into this jumpsuit. So in these images, you'll see the pants because of this cotton fabric definitely stand out. So it is quite wide legged. I extended my pant legs so that they were going to be maxi length. The Zadie jumpsuit is often cropped if you will so I wanted to make sure mine was full length so you will see that in the images here I also wanted to incorporate this darker sort of portion of the fabric in the sleeves in the bodice and then at the bottom of the pant leg so hopefully you can see that when I made my Zadie jumpsuit I cut out a size 10 I believe and graded out to a size 14 at the hip and I used 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So really, I think that would have been me cutting or sewing up a size 8 because the Zadie jumpsuit, if memory serves me correctly, wants you to use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So it worked out to be about a size 10 or so. I still think that I could have um, sized down a little bit. But I do recognize that because of the structure of the fabric I was working with, that's why it's very um, like the legs stand out quite a bit. If I were to be using like a viscose or a rayon, I'm sure this would be super drapey. And I do believe in the future I would use those same that same size. I prefer to have 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance just in case I ever want to take it in, let it out. I like having just that extra bit of fabric in the seams. So that is my Zadie jumpsuit. I made this um, at the top of November for the So Romp Jump Play 22 challenge again hosted by V from 85th and Wade. That was a challenge hosted in October but I got to mine at the top of this month. Then I had shown you this lovely dress um, which I'm really proud of. It's the most gorgeous teal like buttery soft fabric here and I picked this fabric up at G Street Fabrics in their dead stock section a couple of years ago um, and it's just super soft and like heavier weight knit so I really enjoyed it and because of this gorgeous color I knew that I wanted it to be a garment that I would be wearing into the office and wear a bit more frequently. I picked up Simplicity 8874 and it is this gorgeous knit dress pattern. It has bust starts. It also has this beautiful swing skirt, which is a four panel skirt. So it does have a seam up the front and up the back as well. It comes with only the short sleeves. I went ahead and hacked mine for the autumn and winter to make it long sleeves. I cannot praise this pattern enough. Some of the things that I love about it, again, I think you get exceptional shaping because of that bust start. Now, I'm not so well endowed in that area. I don't know that I would necessarily need bust starts, but if you are someone who is fuller busted, that would definitely be of benefit to you. I did make and cut out a much wider neckband. I thought that was going to give me a mock neck. It is just at um, like a jewel neckline so I love it again super cozy because I extended the sleeve it does ask you to cut the back of the bodice on the fold I'm not actually sure why in future makes I will not do that <laughs> um, it doesn't add any shaping that I can see because it is sort of a straight line I don't think that's necessary you could 
add pockets to this I chose to omit pockets from mine simply because I didn't want to be able to see the pockets from the outside I didn't test it to see if that were going to be the case I just figured I could do without them I love that on the inside they ask you to create this channeling and to put some elastic in here for a knit garment with such a full skirt I think that's genius because it really does help to keep that up on your body especially if your knit might be a bit heavier and want to drag the dress down so I like that this just reinforces that waistline I didn't use the elastic guide that came in the um, envelope I often find that those are not helpful so I went ahead and just measured the elastic and made it just a little bit snug around my waist and that's how I um, cut it so I really enjoy this dress love 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 it can't praise it enough I think this is going to be my go-to my mom actually wanted some knit skirts that were more a-line I think this is going to be the pattern that I show her and then we'll just put a waistband at the top of it and use this pattern for skirts another thing that I think I'm going to test out and hack is whether or not I could cut out the skirt without including that center front seam there are some just skirts that I might want to make and maybe depending on the pattern that's on there I don't want it to like create that V because of the way it's cut so I want to test that out so I can see if it impacts the drape and the way that the skirt falls if I just cut the back and the front out on the fold so I'm going to report back when I do that. However, I loved this pattern so much, I had already mentioned to you all that I cut it out again. Um, and I use this gorgeous, I think it's a rayon knit fabric. And I recently picked this up at G Street Fabrics, again, in their dead stock section. Um, and I had about two and a half yards of it, I believe. And I made myself another dress. So here it is. Um, and you will, of course, see it in the clips. It is very lightweight so I did wear this to work wore it with some tights and a slip under it so that it wouldn't stick to my tights and wore it with boots and I love it I could also see someone wearing this with like longer boots so that you wouldn't have to do the tights if you can get down like that so it really is such a versatile dress I'm so happy that I went ahead and just extended the sleeves because now I will be making winter and fall dresses out of this pattern forever I also omitted the pockets in this because it's a slinkier knit I definitely didn't want to create any bulk and I wasn't going to actually put anything in a knit this lightweight because it would just drag the dress down so this one of course I was just going to omit I love how fantastic it turned out it feels super cozy when I'm wearing it and I just I like it's like reverse tie-dye or something that's what vibes it gives me really good fit for the size I ended up cutting the bodice at a size 12 which has a finished garment measurement for the bust of a 34 and a half when I'm working with knits I want there to be just a little bit of negative ease so my bust typically is around um, 35 36 so having that negative ease I could have sized down just a little bit I guess if I wanted to but I feel really comfortable with the size 12 I don't feel like it's clinging or anything like that and at the hip so I cut the skirt at the waist at a size 12 and graded out to the largest size in this pack which was a size 18 towards the bottom so that's how I finished this off I think it's fantastic I would um, highly recommend this pattern from there because I had already changed my serger thread to black we were doing all the things all the things so last week as well I had shown you my first edition of my gable top made out of this gorgeous um, sage green no olive green olive green olive green um, fabric these are two different fabrics this feels like a peach skin almost is that what peach skin feels like I don't know um, feels very velvety like buttery almost and then this is like a nice rib knit they are in the same colorway but different fabrics and I found both of these at G Street fabric last year so it's in a far off very very old fabric haul and I had very little yardage of both of these so I decided to combine them and make this little number it does have this like puff sleeve that I hacked 
from the gable top just so I could use as much of the fabric as possible. As I wear it, I don't know if I like that. I might just go ahead and make it a straight sleeve. I'm considering that, but it's already made, so I'm like, do I, do I, or do I just leave it as is? I haven't decided yet. I initially cut the gable top out as a size 14 given the finished garment measurements which I don't have at hand at the moment but it was telling me that around a size 14 would work so that is what this olive green um, top is made as this big it has a lot of wearing ease in here that I don't think is quite reflected in the finished garment measurements for me um, and also because it's knit you often have a bit more give so I did end up making a, another gable top out of the most luxurious black knit fabric and it is a heavier weight it's like substantial it's super cozy so when you stretch it you do get that but again because this has so much wearing ease it doesn't stretch that far to create that on the inside it looks like this do you see that it's like fuzzy. I don't I don't know how to describe it but it feels amazing on and I love it I ended up taking in the shoulder seam by half an inch on both sides just to close up the neck opening just a little bit I might even do it a little bit further for the next ones that I do because there will be more there are only three pattern pieces for the gable top for the win. It is incredible. A front, a back, and a sleeve. You don't need a neck binding because it just folds over on itself. I don't own any like garment tags. Might need to get some. I could have also used ribbon. I didn't. However, I will because it is so challenging to figure out what side is the front or the back because they look almost identical. The only way I find out is because I did indeed stabilize the back shoulder seam as you're told to do in the pattern. So I just look for which of the sides has the stitching and that's how I know what's the back. But my Lanta, you will not be able to find that out. So I graded this down to a size 10 and I still have some wiggle room so honestly I could possibly cut the smallest size that they do this in which is size 6 depending on how stretchy my fabric is depending on how fitted I want it to look but I liked the fit of this black one I wanted to make the sleeves just a little bit extra long I was doing my trusty new triple zigzag stitch and um, I put a hole oh, I put a hole in so it just like ate my fabric and then as I was snatching it back from the depths of my sewing machine, I put a hole in it. So I'm going to figure out if I have the energy to seam rip that because it's really in there. I mean, it just was going to town on it and um, it's a lot of stitching. So I'm going to figure out how to rectify that. I do think I have some black knit interfacing. Might go ahead and, you know patch that up a little bit and then hem it. I also did not hem the bottom. This is where I started getting really excited to just get to the next thing and I need to slow my roll and finish each project as I go. But I didn't. And here we are. It's so good. It makes me feel like I should be in a Bowdoin ad, like a campaign ad with just the slit. It's so sophisticated. I love the gable top. So happy I got that one. Next up, this is a pattern actually that some of my friends up here, some of my sewing friends on the on the inter, on the interwebs, um, were also super excited to sew this fall winter. So I can't wait to see their makes. And I am talking about none other than Simplicity Nine Four Five One. So that is this hot number here with the ruching up at the shoulder and also at the side seams. It is awesome. This is another one of those that the neckline is sort of finished off in a certain way. Um, it sort of funnels up just slightly up the neck, which I appreciate. In the back, as you can see here, they do want you to um, cut the back in two pieces and then finish it off with a button closure there. Um, I didn't do that. So I remember watching Julie's video from the curated curvy and she was talking about this pattern she's like mm. 
tell me more like why and I was like duly noted my friend I'm also not gonna cut it with that in the back which usually I don't as you saw me talk about with the other simplicity pattern sometimes I will test it out and just see but honestly there are moments where I'm like why would I why would I engage in such an activity why would I give myself three more steps no ma'am not with the knit fabric I will say proceed with caution if you choose to be like me and omit the center back seam and not include the little open enclosure piece with the with the button I did it twice I would recommend it to those who don't mind having to like finagle things over their head and also if your fabric has enough recovery you will stretch out this neck opening for sure. So if you're working with a fabric that has a little bit less recovery than optimal, you won't be happy. So I would just say, you know what, try it for the first time with the center back seam, do the button closure, and then wear it without undoing the button and see if that type of fabric that you're working with would allow you to omit doing said thing. Anyway. I'm just going to jump into my makes. I have this viscose or like rayon um, jersey fabric that I picked up at Joann's last year in clearance possibly. That's usually where I find my things. It's like a really cool abstract polka dot sort of thing and I love it. It's I feel like an artiste like I'm going to blend into some sort of painting somewhere. Um, but the ruching detail is awesome. This is one of those knit projects that you're going to be equally on your serger as much as you are on the sewing machine because you do begin by having to gather all of these bits around the neckline as well as down here along the side seam. When I made it for the first time, I also discovered that they ask you to use interfacing for the neck band. Um, so maybe a knit interfacing. I was not going to do that and also because I didn't include the like center back seam what I ended up doing I got like I have in my stash this I would equate it to like a swimwear fabric right so it's really sturdy and substantial and I was like that might be what I'm gonna use so I did and I cut the like facing for the neckband twice out of the fabric and out of that and I just use this as my interfacing if you will because it has a great recovery so it helps it like snap back into shape so I do like squeeze this on over my neck and then it sits here as I was sewing the side seams I did get just a little bit of a puckering here I didn't do such a great job there <clears throat> on the other side it's much better but because of that when I wear it I just like tuck this side in a little bit and because it sits really flush on my neck it just sits beautifully like so I really appreciate it I like the ruching detail a lot I will say that if you were fuller busted um, I think that the ruching will catch a lot nicer I find that I have a lot of extra fabric under the armpit because of the way that this front pattern piece is cut it's really wide piece you know so if you're fuller busted all of this would catch as it tries to you know stretch over your bust I don't have that particular blessing so you know it's great I just want to show you what the front pattern piece looks like all right so here is that lovely this is the side ruching and here is the shoulder ruching so as you can see you end up with this is the arm side so you end up with a, a lot of fabric here and they want you to start the ruching like right under the armpit for me in in the future what I think I might do is start that a little bit further down I'm just gonna have to show you what I do what I, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove a bit of that excess here and then start my ruching down here so I can just absorb just a bit of that extra fabric that's sitting under my armpit which I don't like otherwise I love 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 this if you can see on the finished garment measurements they do indicate that they're expecting you to have half an inch ease 
above your body measurement. If I could offer you one takeaway if you are trying to attempt this pattern, give yourself maybe half an inch negative ease for any project that includes ruching. And if you've ever done ruching for something else, hopefully you can attest to this. You need that negative ease for the fabric to actually cling to your body. That is what creates like the lovely ruched effect. As soon as you start going at your body measurement or have like half an inch <laughs> extra, it is going to just droop. It has nothing to hold on to. Don't do that, my friends. I, that, that would be my advice. The size 10 gives you a finished garment measurement of 33 inches. Um, so I am about a 35 to a 36 inch bust. So that gave me two inches negative wearing ease, which was perfect to allow the fabric to actually have something to cling to so it could ruch. Um, and it wasn't tight or anything like that. Hopefully you can see in the images, but that is what I ended up going with, and I'm really happy with that. I liked it so much that I wanted to test it out again. I was doing a lot of multiples this uh, week. So after I made that one, I wanted to utilize this awesome, like, sweatery knit that I picked up at G Street Fabrics a year and a half ago, last year. And I've had it in my stash. I knew it's a lightweight sort of um, sweater knit, so I wanted... A top I knew I was gonna do a top I didn't think that it was heavy enough for me to feel comfortable in it as like a sweater dress so this was gonna be perfect and it was lightweight enough to hold the gathers without becoming too bulky so this was awesome I appreciate that this is black so I'm gonna try and come close so you can see the details but look at that beautiful gathering there at the shoulder and then for this neckline I did not include any sort of interfacing I just cut the same fabric out um, for the facing itself I could have now in hindsight put like a small a really thin elastic there also just to catch it to help with the recovery I didn't but if I find that it is gaping or stretching and not bouncing back I might go back in and do that however I did like tack the facing down with um, stitching in the ditch here at the neckline so I hope I don't need to do that but if I did I would just unpick that put um, a really small and thin elastic around the neckline again so it can help it you know bounce back after I stretch it over my head since I omitted the back seam. For the ruching here at the side I did do something a little bit different. I wanted to do like a high low effect top so I extended the ruching quite a bit um, for about I think eight inches or so um, of the fabric to ruch it up along the side there. And then I, based on how my fabric was cut, I just had an awkward bit of fabric here. So I ruched that on the back side. So hopefully you can see it on. I am wearing black pants <laughs> in the video that I'm using to share it, but that's just what I had to show you some of the other tops. So I appreciate the fact that it's black on black, but I do think that you can actually see the design lines of the top. I wanted to use as much of this fabric as possible, so I did this like funky little high-low hem situation, um, which I think would be cool with like jeans or something that's a different color as well, just so you can see that sort of waterfall in the back there. I cut it out really wonky on the fabric as well to preserve, what was I trying to do? I don't know if I was trying to preserve the fabric or I thought that cutting the back on the bias was going to help in some way. I don't quite know. I couldn't tell you. But that's what I did. I cut the back on the bias and then had like this really long tail. And then once I made it up, I figured out where I needed to trim it so that it gave a nice like fall. I like it. I just wanted to play around with this. I think you could hack this pattern very easily into a dress as well and I do have some patterns that have this like ruched effect but if I can cut down on having to cut out another pattern and just use this I may do that um, so I'll see what fabrics I have in my stash that are substantial enough that I feel comfortable wearing them as a dress and then see if I want to do this again love something that doesn't include too too many pieces and this was awesome you have the neck band front and back you have front and back bodice and then the sleeve. So about five pattern pieces for this particular one. Really good. Then I was able to get to a garment that I've wanted to sew forever and a fabric that I've wanted to sew forever. 
And I picked out Simplicity 1108 and I'm really excited about it. I made view D, I guess, yeah, view D. So I made view D right there, like the shorter length one. And it is made out of this incredible velvet burnout fabric from Joanne Fabrics. I got this, I think last year in their clearance. I had been hunting for this fabric for months, watching it in the clearance. It was never low enough for me. I think may, I may have gotten this two years ago, actually. Um, the price never got low enough for me. And then finally, when I went to my personal, uh, my, my personal Joann's, my local Joann's, I saw that they had a smidge, like a smidge over one yard left because I had just waited that long. And I said, Fatma, I don't care what the price is. Go ahead and get you some. So I did. And here it is. And I finally made myself a little duster. Um, I made it as long as I could given the fabric that I had available to me. So I cut the sleeve out first and then just laid the pattern pieces to see how long I could make it. And it's a pretty decent length. Um, now, the only thing that I'm trying to figure out is whether or not I add that same velvet lace trim detail along the collar right now i just have it finished off with this awesome ribbon that i found in my stash but i was thinking like i could go ahead in i already cut this lace enough to sort of trim the whole neckline even down to the bottom so let me know in the comments down below what you think I would love to wear this with like a graphic tee, a really nice chunky sweater, and some jeans or slacks, any, anything. Toss it on over a dress, put a belt over it. It's just fabulous. The only thing that I'm sad about is that I didn't have enough of this fabric to make like the full length duster. That was like the dream and the vision. And I just knew that I was going to wait until the fabric was the right price and it wasn't the right price before there wasn't enough fabric so I just had to get what I could at that time but I'm so happy I'm sure they'll probably come out as you know fall and winter with some more lovely velvet burnouts possibly um that's that's a hope anyways and this is non-stretch so just a woven fabric the one of the things that stopped me like why it's taken me so long to make this simply because when I would open it up and see how thick the pages were I was like that's so many pages to get out to cut the pattern let alone cut the fabric and all of that this was one of the easiest things to make like if I I was using a slippery fabric so that did cause a bit of like friction and I had to um, go slow and figuring out you know the lace trim detail and all of that but this out of like a cotton or um a rayon chalet that has a bit more bite to it so simple so simple and I'm so thrilled that I have it cut out because now it'll just be a breeze three pattern pieces front back and the sleeve incredible I love it I also have a quilt that I thrifted like last year or so but I might use this as the pattern because I've been trying I've been trying to figure out what pattern to do with it but like something that I could just toss on like this it wouldn't have a collar or I could hack a collar onto it I don't know but this might be a good base for me to consider for it now that I already have it cut out so those are all of the things that I made this past week it was a very 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 productive week if I do say so myself and I do the final thing that I started cutting into was this awesome fabric that I picked up at G Street Fabric more recently um, in their dead stock section again so it's just this cotton fabric black base with this awesome emerald green like rectangles on it and I loved it so much there were three yards of it and I picked up all three yards I am making butterick b6702 I'm using the bodice for it I'm making my own tiered gathered skirt to go with it because I couldn't be bothered to do the um, skirt paneling out of this fabric only because of the geometric print but also the way that I found the fabric it was already cut into and I wouldn't have enough to cut out the skirts from this pattern but I love the bodice and wanted to test it out 
this thing gave me such a hard time the past couple of days and I know Talisha from Creativity by T and as well as Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs um, have both made this and I love their versions and that was a really big reason why I picked up this pattern but for whatever reason um, my brain when I was cutting out stuff was not paying attention the first mistake I did when I cut out the front band I, for, I didn't realize that I needed to cut four of those pieces. So I cut out two, interfaced them, and thought that I was supposed to flip it over. And then I was like, that's a really thin placket. That don't make no sense. And then it wasn't fitting. It has beautiful bust darts as well as back darts that give you a beautiful fit. I had to release the back darts because that's how tight it was. I ended up cutting a size 12 in this and the size 12 says that the finished garment measurement at the bus is a 37 and a half inch um, which would just be an inch and a half above my bust line so I probably shouldn't have been trying to make it that fitted to begin with. I should have cut a size 14 at the bust which I believe the finished garment measurements are 39 and a half a lot better you know three inches of wearing ease is probably where i should be especially for something with a button front placket you don't want that gaping or pulling in any way so that was my mistake so i cut a size 12 should have cut the size 14 i'm just used to cutting a size 12 in you know simplicity but i need to mind my manners and read the things what is currently giving me a hard time though oh so once i figured out where i went wrong i went ahead and cut uh, back you know like two different pieces now for the inner part of the placket and put that on what is currently giving me a hard time is the collar the collar for me is not fitting around my neckline I have all of this extra fabric that's just puckering here so this was basted into place because I was trying to figure out what the heck was going on I don't know what I'm doing wrong on the actual bodice piece what I'm going to do is around the neckline I'm going to stitch a line at the 5 8 of an inch mark right so without the collar on it I'm just going to put a line of thread so I know where the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance is I'm then going to put another line of stitching maybe half an inch um, from the edge of the neckline and then I'm going to snip into it in the instructions they do say to snip into the neckline so that you can open it up a bit flatter to fit the collar band. Maybe that's where I'm going wrong because I haven't snipped into this and I've been trying to, you know, fit it around a really extreme curve of this neck band. But I'm really hopeful that it works because I've put in a ton of details. Look at this. I used my Rick Rack. I noticed that I had Rick Rack that was the exact same color. So I tried to be mindful to put it at any of the seams. So I put it in the back yoke there. I put it in the collar itself. I put it right alongside the um, placket band right there. Now I forgot the shoulder seam. So I think I'm just going to apply the Rick Rack once I take the collar off to redo it put the Rick Rack. It won't be like embedded in the seam like all the other ones are. It'll just lay on top, but I think it's still going to be cute because I want to define all of these various things. And as I mentioned before, utilizing my trim and embellishing my garments is something that I really want to do. I can appreciate that you don't get a huge impact from it because the colors are so similar and the print is, you know, busy enough, but it is those minor details. I think that are gonna make me happy you know when I wear it in the sleeves I did the same for the sleeve cuffs there super cute and I like that I made it sort of um, extend over the bottom like that so on my skin that's all you're gonna see I love it it's like a gator I love it um, to get the length of skirt that I wanted I did have to sort of um, cut the skirt tiers a little bit differently it's going to be a little bit different i have the rectangles going horizontally for the first tier of the skirt and then back to being vertical for the bottom tier which matches the bodice so i figured i'd sandwich this in the middle just to give a little bit of visual interest i can't wait to figure that out that's going to be my project this weekend just peeking to see if the kids are back <laughs> okay um the other thing that I'm going to be sewing this weekend is for one of my grannies and um, my grandmama. 
gave me some of her clothes that she wanted me to hem back in October, I think. And you all know, you all know that I haven't sewn anything in October. She doesn't know that. So um, my cousin called me recently and was like, Grandma said, if you are not going to sew it, it's like, give it back to her. And if you don't know, them is fighting words. Okay. <laughs> That's her kind way of saying, girl, get it together. <laughs> Hook me up or give it back. Um, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm gonna get to it so that's that's gonna be I think the first thing I do before I revisit that Butterick shirt dress pattern that's been giving me a hard time I'm gonna go ahead and fix and hem my grandmommy's clothes so I can give them back to her I want I want to do as I said I would I would do yes but it's just been a lot of fun getting back to sewing and I wanted to make the things that I was excited about and I, I kind of I mean they were under my sewing desk so I kind of forgot so I was happy to have that reminder so that's going to be the thing that I work on and then I'll get back to my personal makes. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and that you'll have an awesome weekend. Get to do something creative, get some sewing in. I want to know what you're working on or if you have plans to make any of the things that I've shown you today. Have a fantastic evening. Bye-bye.